Hello, Ponders! Happy Friday, and welcome back to another episode of Pause, Zip, and Ponder. I'm so excited to share another episode with you guys. Last week, I shared my first episode of my new series called Pauline's Thoughts, and where I shared my own personal journal entry with you guys and talked about love what it meant to me and considering it was the week of valentine's and again i'll be posting new episodes for that series every third friday of the month so if you haven't checked it out go ahead and check that out after this or right now and if you follow me on instagram you'll notice that i changed my instagram name to pauline.ponders i give full credit to my friend jenny and Alyssa for thinking of it thank you so much i don't know why i never thought of it before but i just love the ring to it and it just makes sense <laughs> and in today's episode i have my friend christian with me as we talk about how parents can heavily influence and affect our individual dreams and goals in life and i'll talk more about that and also i still want to continue the theme of love so within this episode we also do talk about even though it can be hard with our parents sometimes you know the love that we have for them even with that so sit back relax and let's just chat hello everyone welcome back to another episode of pause sip and ponder a place where we come together talk about real life issues speak our minds get personal and learn from one another and today i am here with my friend christian hey everyone <laughs> my name's christian a lot of people actually also call me gibby okay but gibby. um <laughs> our host pauline is actually um her boyfriend's name's gilbert they also call him gibby so that's why she calls me christian which i'm fine with but yeah my name's christian flores or gibby flores for some people I'm 22 years old. I recently just graduated um, in college at University of Maryland School of Nursing. Um, as, as the name, my major was nursing. Uh, right now at the moment, I'm doing a part-time job at Kung Fu, Kung Fu Tea, Ellicott City. But I actually already uh, got a job at MedStar National Rehab Hospital in D.C. I just have to pass my NCLEX, and once I pass my NCLEX, uh, which is the n nursing board exam, mm -hmm. um, I'll be able to start working as a nurse there. You'll Some pass. Hobbies, <laughs> huh? You're going to pass. <laughs> I know you'll oh pass. Lord, <laughs> All right. Some hobbies, I guess, um, I love playing volleyball. As sport. I love playing sports um, in general, but mm -hmm. my favorite ones are volleyball, basketball, I love going swimming and also ultimate, ultimate frisbee. Actually, oh, one of wow. my uh, favorite <laughs> sports. I like playing the guitar, even though I'm not really the best. But <laughs> I just like I like music. Right. Um, I like singing. Like I said, even though I'm not the best. Another passion, I guess, is I love helping people in any kind of way, mm -hmm. no matter where, no matter what. What else should I say? Oh, no, that, that, that's good for now. Um, yeah, I, I can definitely relate on you with that one where you said that you like helping people. Um, and there's so many different ways to help people. And I think it's kind of cool that everyone who has the desire to help can do it, no matter whether it's through nursing or through art or for talking to people, listening to people. You know, there's so many ways to do that. And... Mm -hmm. Um, what we're here to talk about is that most of us have goals and aspirations, some we've had ever since we were kids, and although it's already set in our heads, maybe we kind of like drew a picture of what we desire to be <laughs> uh, when we grow up, we come across some obstacles and pits in the road and where our parents eventually get involved. They like to butt their heads in and, and really include themselves or maybe you've been influenced and pressured into a certain route that you're expected to go into. And if you are a family-oriented person, which I am, are you, Christian? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, then it's definitely more pressuring and you have the fear of disappointing your family due to traditions or expectations or even if you just care for them. And it can be tough balancing what you want and what your parents want. I think we can all agree with that. Or maybe some of you listening are actually on your own right now and it's been easy for you. 
Um, but t- today we're going to talk about it's n- how it's not really easy for us <laughs> mm-hmm. and how do we balance it? You know, what are the risks in following either one of the two? So, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoy this discussion we are about to talk about. And yes. <laughs> so to start, I guess we can talk about what are your goals personally uh, for you, Christian? What are your goals or your dream career, um, you already said that you're into nursing and you're already basically almost there. Um, and how long have you had those aspirations of yours? Um, so goals, I, w- I want to say I'm a very goal-oriented person. Mm-hmm. I have short-term goals and I have long-term goals. Mm-hmm. Of my, my one utmost short-term goal, of course, is to pass the NCLEX and really just start working as a nurse in the job that I got Um, one of my long-term goals is to be able to travel to go back to the Philippines for just maybe two weeks to spend some me time I guess Mm -hmm. it's a way for me to just kind of treat myself after you know college and all that so that's one of my goals and I'm actually saving up um, some money already uh, to buy plane ticket to go to the Philippines I have this plan of going to like (laughs) the wonderful islands in the Philippines so I'm excited for that you guys should definitely go to the Philippines oh yes definitely recommend it oh yeah we are both Filipino by the way which might be a good uh detail to mention for what we're about to talk today about all right go ahead (laughs) another goal is another long-term goal I guess is to be able to get a car Mm -hmm. um one of my dream cars I guess I guess that would also be considered as a dream. Nice. My dream car is to get a Tesla. Wow. Um, yeah, that's, nice. that's my dream. And that's a goal that I plan to actually achieve in mm-hmm. the future. Mm-hmm. Um, my dream is also to go higher in my education. Um, I plan to, right now, at the moment, I'm thinking of probably pursuing nurse practitioner. Um, what is that exactly? Nurse practitioner, I guess, let's just say, is another... Like, they're also considered doctors. Hmm. Um, They can prescribe uh, medications. I, to be, that's the thing. To to be honest, I don't completely know what they do. Mm -hmm. I just know in general there are, like, physicians, like um, doctors, like I said. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's one of my dream is to go higher. And nurse practitioner is what, what I'm kind of looking at the moment. It could change. You know, you never know. Right. But um, that is one of my dream career, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my dream career. It's been, hasn't been long really um, of how I've thought about becoming a nurse practitioner. Oh, so you must have had another dream before being yeah, like thinking actually. of a nurse? What was that? <laughs> well, before nursing, actually, I wanted to do pharmacy as my, oh, okay. um, my dream job. Yeah. Um, but if I were to do pharmacy, I had to pretty much not have a life during college because <laughs> my parents wanted me to go straight to pharmacy school after I take the prereqs, mm-hmm. um, prerequisite classes. So I don't know. I, and I just and I thought about it. I, I felt like I do love helping people, but not in that way. I guess, you know, pharmacy, uh, pharmacists, they do make money and they help people by giving them medications right. um, f- so people can, you know, s- live longer right. or stay healthy. But for me, I'm more of a kind of hands-on kind of person right. that I want to, like, be there mm-hmm. in action. Not, like, action. behind the counter. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, so, yeah, it was pharmacist um, back then I wanted to do, but now I changed hmm. to nurse. Nice. So, Nice. Um, for me, I don't really talk about my goals always on, on this podcast. Um, that's a hard question, especially if you're kind of like in the middle of like just, I mean, I, I've always been independent as a little kid. Mm-hmm. So adult life kind of hit me like at a young age. So I would have to think about these things earlier. Um, but one goal I really have is to be a teacher. Um, some of you may know that. I just love seeing kids develop and them reaching their full potential and I think because I was raised to be independent and kind of on my own and had to raise my brother I think that really drove my passion to to love kids and how I kind of missed out on like fully experiencing and like um, 
I guess having the the right teacher because we all have those bad teachers um so I definitely want to be that that teacher that everyone like uh really remembers uh, throughout their their childhood because I think it's a it's a really crucial area and like time in your life as a child um that really influences you um with that also um basically I am out of nine kids (laughs) <laughs> and um, yes, um, and I am the firstborn here in America. So even though I'm the youngest out of my my side of the family because I have a half brother, it's kind of been always has the pressure on me because you're the first kind of like the firstborn almost like you're the eldest but here. Mm-hmm. Um, so you had to like have a lot of responsibilities. Um, I seen my mom like struggle, so one of my very goals is to like really give back to her in a way um, financially. Mm-hmm. My goal is to kind of like I guess they would call it a breadwinner, but I don't know, I don't really like the term, but just like being able to financially provide for my family and giving back to them. That's one of my great goals. Um, also, just to like this podcast, just continue to inspire people and get a car. <laughs> That's my goal this year. Get a car. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are my goals. Talking about now our parents, because they do play a big role in our lives. Ever since we were born, they probably had all these dreams about us, how they wanted us to be uh, perceived, what kind of job they wanted for us. Um, so how, uh, what is your family to you? How much do you value your, your parents and what's their impact on you? <clears throat> Well, my parents are one of my most inspiring um, people Mm -hmm. that I look up to. Um, I guess of what they have done for me and my siblings throughout their their life. Um, I was born actually in the Philippines and lived there for 11 years. And we moved here in the United States uh, 2008? Yeah, 2008. Um, and at first, it was funny how I thought that we were just going to have a vacation. Because um, <laughs> I was enjoying my life there in the Philippines yeah. that, at that age. But then, out of nowhere, I guess my parents decided to, to move to the United States. It was a risk as well, actually. Um, they had this plan like when we were kids I actually just kind of found out like not super recently but like Mm -hmm. slightly recently from my parents of their plan of actually going to the United States Mm -hmm. just so um, my siblings and I can get a better opportunity when it comes Mm -hmm. to like a better lifestyle a better job Mm -hmm. stuff like that right Um, they believe that um, living in the United States would be better for us rather than living in the, the Philippines. Right. Um, so with that, I was really inspired of what they did. They pretty much just never gave up. And for when we came to the United States, it was just my mom that had a job. Um, also, one thing I forgot to mention, I am a um, sibling of four. So there's four of us total. I have two brothers and one sister and me. So I'm the third um, out of four mm-hmm. and you know so sometimes it's a pressure from from parents how they have to take care of four children it's mm-hmm. a lot right. um, um, and so back then like I said my mom was the was the only one that was working um, when we came to the United States when we moved to Maryland actually um, and it was just inspiring how even though my dad was just like living at the house and my mom just working. Mm-hmm. There's one time that actually that happened was my mom decided to quit that job and then found another job at a farther place, which is in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. From where we were, that was like two hours away, um, drive, drive-wise. And back then, of course, since you know it's a job, my mom had to drive up there all the time. Well, we only had one car, so my mm-hmm. dad actually had to drive up with her going there wow. every day and instead of going back <laughs> um my my dad actually instead of like waiting f- going back home you know two hours and then 
going back two hours to pick up my mom. He instead just like went to the church nearby her. Mm. And her, waited for her? And waited for her. Wow. And he would just go to church every single day, waited for my mom um, to be done. And with that, um, I guess one of our prayers or their prayers was answered and my dad ended up also getting a job at the same place that where my mom was working and so with that you know everything was going well and then we moved closer so yeah so that was like the biggest inspiration story I guess that um, that my parents have and it just inspires me because you know how they just didn't give up right Um, especially my dad being the father of the household you know how you right. want to be the one that would like provide for the family but yes. you're the one that don't have it that doesn't have a job but he never gave up right and he kept just praying that one of these days that he will be able to provide for us to right. like my like my mom so right. yeah that's that's one story i guess i wanted to mention that's awesome yeah i think sometimes we take for granted our our family or our parents especially um sometimes you forget like depending who your parents are but like they always have a story i guess the parents role is to really make sure that their their child is nurtured and and taken care of and really like yeah that they they are stable i think that's what they really desire in us for me i definitely value my mom my mom's a single parent and like i said she has nine kids <laughs> so she has a lot to she has a lot on her lap like she has a lot on her shoulders and i was i was able to see that and see like her struggle and like her doing it by herself which is very inspirational and just the fact that she would sacrifice everything she left the philippines to work abroad in saudi arabia she worked with the princess at the time that that was there and then she made the risk in leaving, kind of escaping. Um, and they had a house here. Oh, well, that's I will leave that for another story because it's super long and really inspirational. But basically, she left and risked her life while she was pregnant with me in secret because you're not really supposed to be pregnant while working in Saudi Arabia. So she had to leave. She had no choice. And then she she kind of blindly went wherever, um, just trusted God and found herself here in Washington DC and then her life moved on from there and just the fact that she sacrificed basically her whole life because she had prestigious jobs back in the Philippines and then now she's here and there's a lot of Filipino parents a lot of Filipinos um, who work in something that they might not see themselves working as for example a nanny or like a house cleaner or you know babysitter just stuff like that to know that you know they started from here and then now they're down here and then they expect us to be you know have a better life than they have right here so i think that's really inspirational so i very really really value my my mom for that now talking back uh talking about you know us as as individuals us growing up so eventually we grow up we decide what we want to do or try to decide what we want to do we have this route that's envisioned in our heads but then our parents are always there behind our shoulder. Well, for you, you are you wanted to go in the nursing field, and they wanted you, I'm assuming, to go in the nursing field as well, or did, were they open to whatever? I actually want to kind of go back to um, the question that you asked me earlier, mm-hmm. just because I kind of I felt like I didn't answer it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I say that I value my family, my parents a lot, um, but sometimes... I don't know. It's just, it's. I feel like out of everyone in my family, there's six of us total mm-hmm. that, or out of everyone in my siblings, I'm like the black sheep, mm, per se, really? um, of the family. I don't tend to kind of like, sh- I don't show my care and my love for them through like passion, I guess, or through like yeah. affection. Yeah, yeah. I more so do it by serving them or by mm. just like but more like action proving or yeah proving. yes yeah. exactly I exactly know mm, what you not mean. just i'm just not that affectionate mm-hmm. towards them like i'm not that type of um that type to would like you know kiss them or like um uh, or just like be you yeah, know like, yeah. 
<laughs> goody goody with them. Right. Um, but I value them so much because of what they've done for me and my siblings. So, but sometimes, like I said, I'm not sure if they like realize that if they mm-hmm. don't, uh, if they realize it or not. Um, maybe because you know me being the black sheep, right. I tend to not show it that way. But to me, I'm like, I'm showing it. Yeah. Can't you not see it? Right. But you know, I guess everyone's different to when it comes to their their parents. One thing too, I want to say, my parents. What my parents are like, my parents are you know great people. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually inspire a lot of um, people to from their stories that they had with their marriage and they're I wouldn't say they're very strict um, they're very welcoming people mm-hmm. um, they love to like meet new people you know and if there's like new guests in our home um, they're just always welcome so yeah. they're they're wonderful people and right. a lot, like I said um, and they're very re- religious they love serving the Lord um, and they love just serving others as mm-hmm. well. Oh, question: um, Are are they in the medical field? Oh, or? so my mom. Um, so when we came to the United States, my mom um, was a nurse. Okay. Um, and and right now, currently, my mom is a nurse manager. I guess mm-hmm. so. She doesn't do like the bedside care anymore. Um, so she does that. And then my dad is a HR, which is human resource. Uh, mm-hmm. So he hires nurses. So for me, when I was a kid I guess one thing that inspired me to do what I want was I went to this medical mission with my godfather I guess Mm -hmm. and pretty much in that medical mission we had to take care of um, there were like little kids there were some older adults um, pretty much you know like they needed medicine they needed like supplies they needed food so I was just volunteering as a kid um well, I was kind of forced by my parents <laughs> right. to volunteer at the at the mission trip. Um, I was just one of those people that was just like you know handing out the soup or right. food and or like <laughs> handing out the slippers for the little kids. Yeah. And one thing that really touched me, I guess, was just when they said thank you and they just mm-hmm. smiled at me, and I was like, oh shoot, <laughs> I did something yeah. really nice today. I guess, <laughs> and like it was just a very nice feeling to me, and that led me to choosing to pursue a career in the medical field okay um because like i said i have a passion of helping other people um one thing i know that my mom would love is to uh to have one of her children i guess (laughs) to be in nursing right at first it was actually gonna be my sister that was pursuing nursing but Uh then she did not no she oh really she gave up on that um Uh gave up on that goal so instead, I guess I decided to take on that, not just because that's what my mom wanted, but then, um, but it's because like I thought about it and like okay, like I said, I'm I would rather do like action and be in the front line mm-hmm. of doing care, mm-hmm. and I, you know I researched about nursing and how they're very respected um, like prof- profession, and they do a lot and. Yeah, and they also make, I guess, good money. <laughs> right. So, um, so that's what made me decide to to pursue that um, career. And mm-hmm. like I said, that's like one thing. Of course, my mom was like, "Yes, yes. <laughs> someone is pursuing <laughs> nursing." So, right. Right. And um, and just then, say you didn't. How how do you think things would be in your house? Define what do you mean? Like. Do you feel like okay? Just say you didn't want to do nursing. And do you think they still push you to do it, or they'll still nag you guys mm. about it? I um, mean, of course, it, it hasn't happened. It didn't happen, but I because you said went, they wanted you to come, they wanted you guys to come here to have you know a better yes. life mm-hmm. and and to have a stable job and mm-hmm. income. Um, and usually, I think maybe this is just a cultural thing. But mostly Filipinos really envision their kids to be nurses, or mm-hmm. would like to, mm-hmm. um, just because of the benefits that come out of it. So do you think that it would make any difference if you weren't? Um, I'm not, I don't think so, because um, my brother, my big brother and my eldest, um, he pursued kinesiology um, as a major, 
and for my sister she instead decided to do psych instead of nursing Mm -hmm. um i guess they had some uh that's a thing that's a that's a tricky question because i guess for me i feel like one person that would be able to answer that i guess is my sister because Mm. um right she's the one that like didn't pursue did, nursing. Didn't pursue nursing or didn't pursue like, you know, the medical yeah. field yeah. area where most Filipino um, parents would love mm-hmm. their children to be. Yeah. So um, I, w- I, I guess I it's would It's also a question to ask them. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Yeah. So, I mean, that is, that's, that's actually interesting. I, I, I mean, an interesting question. Yeah. I feel like probably after this, I'll ask my sibling or my sister what, if they had, if my parents had some kind of like different yeah. uh, mindset. I think towards. it's a good question to ask them because not to be like a downer or anything, but it would be kind of upsetting to know that they they would just want to control your life mm-hmm. and want to set you in this mm-hmm. this path just just for the benefit of just oh, yeah. to mm-hmm. have it, you know, mm-hmm. rather than having the mindset that whatever they see you in, whatever it is, mm-hmm. then they should trust you, you mm-hmm. know type of thing um but parents are different mm-hmm. like mindsets are different just a just a question yeah. to ask yeah i guess it was uh i don't know uh since i did ended up loving nursing mm-hmm. i guess it's just it, it's just hard to to um to answer yeah because uh, like uh, it's not like they won't wouldn't love you if you didn't but you know maybe there is like families out there parents yeah, out there who really true. push their parents or their kids to do something and they don't, they don't want to do it and then they yeah. just completely disown them and then it's just like are you really parents you know true so and that's another episode but um yeah i mean even though you already have the envision of being a nurse and that's what they ex- wanted um did you ever reach any bumps like you said earlier Ooh. that the expectations okay. are high because it is a prestigious field <clears throat> so like what more <laughs> can okay. you do you know um so were there any bumps? There were a lot of bumps um, mm-hmm. to, um, towards that goal. Um, I guess one thing I want to mention is, you know, I had some breakdowns. I had some, uh, like, l- legit, there was, I had some doubts, too, if I was even able or capable to finish um, mm-hmm. nursing school. So there was one time, I'm, I'm thinking if I should, <laughs> if I should, um, Say it? To say it or not. <laughs> you don't have Fine, to... I'll say it. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so, one thing, um, if I were to... Okay, scratch that, sorry. All right, I'll say it. So, I graduated in December 2018. Um, I, gr- um, I graduated high school 2014. So, technically, if I were to graduate on time, mm-hmm. um, I, was, I w- su- was supposed to graduate on spring 2018 Mm -hmm. but instead I graduate on fall 2018 Um, so you're like a a semester late yes I was I I graduated a semester late and there's a reason to that Mm -hmm. and that's why I was like thinking if I should share it or not (laughs) but I guess for this podcast why not Um, and I feel like it just leads to like a good story um, Mm -hmm. or leads to like something good so for my first semester of nursing school, which was on fall 20, uh, 2016, I I was doing a lot, you know. I was I got accepted into nursing school, so that's like, you know, my first semester. And first semester of nursing school is like hell. Yeah. It's crazy. Five yeah. classes and just like, it's just a lot. Yeah. Uh, I can't, there's a lot of words for me to <laughs> describe how hard it was, at least for me. Yeah. You know, there are some people there born smart, that <laughs> pretty sure didn't really affect them. But yeah. for me, it was very hard. Because also on top of that, um, I was a chapter leader um, for this church group mm-hmm. that I'm in um, called um, Couples for Christ. Mm-hmm. At that time, I was the chapter leader of um, youth for Christ for the chapter in, in Maryland, I guess. Well, one chapter in Maryland. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I was a dance modern director at University of Maryland College Park at mm-hmm. the Filipino group there called FCA. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then also in College Park, I was also a leader for the campus-based ministry, um, like for Catholics, mm-hmm. I guess. 
Um, That's a lot. Yeah, and then <laughs> on top of that, I had a part-time job at Kung Fu Tea. Right. So, like, I was doing a lot. Um, and, you know, my parents, being parents, they're like, are you sure you're supposed, you're gonna, you, you should do that? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, because there was, because I could have said no to, like, all of these, uh, you know, the being a leader at mm-hmm. the uh, church group, being mm-hmm. a leader at the club in College Park. I could have said no to all of those, mm-hmm. but to me, I wanted to do that. Right. You know, that was something I wanted to do, but they didn't want me to do that because mm-hmm. all they wanted for me is to, f- uh, to focus on school. So, so with that, I guess what happened in that semester was that I did well schooling. I did decent. But there was one class that I actually ended up failing, mm-hmm. and that was actually the very my that was the very first like college class that I've failed ever in my life. <laughs> um, to me, it was very it was so after that everything just went like downhill of mm-hmm. like just everything in my life and like and with my relationship I guess with my with my parents mm-hmm. um, because during that time you know before I even started the nursing school I was telling them that yo this let me do this I can do this Mm -hmm. like like I was like legit telling them like you know I want to be that superman that like to be able to like do all of these things on top of that be able to succeed in nursing right so that's what I was trying to like really prove to them but then I failed I Mm -hmm. failed the class so Mm -hmm. I failed them I failed myself Mm -hmm. and that really like devastated me I guess yeah so that made me kind of like that made me mad at myself how like you know I told them like I told them that I'm gonna prove Mm. you guys that I'm gonna do this but I failed them and that hurts me because I failed my parents yeah because that's the only thing that I want to do um you know what I guess one of like the goals too that I forgot to mention is also give back to my parents Mm -hmm. and prove to them that one of like I'm I'm not a worthless son right. I guess right. um, that I actually did something to um, to make them proud right. I just want to make them proud in right. general like right. that's what um, in any way really in any way yeah. I want them to be proud of me of what I'm doing in my life mm-hmm. so and when I you know failed them with that that really like crushed them and I felt like they got even more strict towards me mm-hmm. and with that all they really think about me I f- this is what I feel mm-hmm. you know if let's say my my siblings are, are listening to this podcast in the future <laughs> or if my parents hey hey uh, <laughs> sorry um, but um but for me I felt like um that every time they look at me they just think about you should you know you should be studying you should be um focusing in your studies so Mm -hmm. you can you know pass nursing school and all that stuff Mm -hmm. so that um so that like really devastated me and like so with that i that's when i kind of became even more of the black sheep Mm -hmm. in the family because i just like always would isolate myself again um away from my family um because like I guess one thing after that failure that I had, I told myself, I am not gonna disappoint them ever again with you know with this, mm-hmm. and um, I really really want to prove to them that I can do this, mm-hmm. and so, like I really had that mindset to 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 do that, and so there are times that like my parents were actually like you know offering me some help or support yeah. like oh do you need some help to you know yeah. for like like let's say buying this book that you right. may need stuff like that and I just I guess for me I just kept saying no because it's not that I don't want their help right um so you well, want to well it's not that I don't need their help of course like getting help is like great yeah uh, I, I, uh, I don't mind when I get help but I guess one thing is from them like I wouldn't want to get help from them because I want to prove to them that I can that actually do this yeah. by myself. Like, yeah. I already failed you once. Yeah. Let me prove to myself and to y'all that I can do this right. myself without your help. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, if I do need help, then that's when I'll ask you. But I guess during those times, I didn't need help. And most of the times, I guess I didn't need help because, um, not to like be biased, but like, I have some 
I'm like blessed and grateful with some friends and even some random people mm -hmm. that would just help me um, throughout my nursing, uh, throughout my nursing school. Mm -hmm. So, do you think do they know that that you, the reason why you distance yourself or you haven't? I don't because so. of course we That's don't. It's kind of hard to so. tell them that, but you know they, yeah. I as, I don't think so. Like I feel like this issue has been kind of like um, has been building up since that failure I guess mm -hmm. um, and f to me I was kind of hoping that after I pa you know after I finish school once I actually get that degree that I would hope that they won't think of me as that you know anymore like they don't just think of me as like if every time I come home they just say like oh how's school mm -hmm. like sometimes they don't even like care about like mm -hmm. what else is happening in my life only all just they school. ask is just school and that's yeah. like and that like really you know like like what am I to you yeah. am I your actually you know like do you treat me as just like, like your, your product or you just know? like something that you want you know yeah. to have like an ex success and so I like get that like so I was hoping that that we would pass that after nursing school. Right. But then now I have the NCLEX. Mm. Are you scared? And, and, yeah, <laughs> and, and, like, I'm super scared. Yeah. Because um, I'm not the best test taker. Like, I get Neither panic am attacks I, dude. and, Neither and am I. anxiety attacks during tests. But pretty much what I'm saying is, like, you know, um, I really hope, I, I was hoping that after nursing school, like, our relationship would be better but at the moment um, right now I would say it's not it's not going better because that's what that's what they think about um, every time they see me is instead of school that they think about shouldn't you be studying for your NCLEX and stuff mm. like that like, mm -hmm. and sometimes like so I have a part-time job in um, Kung Fu Tea and like I come home and they ask did you go uh, did you come from work I was like yeah and then a couple seconds later, they're like, shouldn't you, like, be, you know, studying. Um, be studying? Or shouldn't you, like, kind of, yeah. like, less your out, lessen your hours in, um, um, for, in your work to yeah. focus on studying? I get that. Yeah. Honestly, I get that. Yeah. And, um, but, like I said, people are born smart. Yeah. Um, it some takes people. time. And for, for me, people. I'm not, like, I am, I'm not someone that would legit sit at a table or um, and study for like 10 hours straight yeah I don't think my mind can do that right so like <laughs> I need something to like like I need take your mind yeah, off to, of it take, exactly and, then and I feel like you know I can do that with just working right. like instead of like doing some stupid stuff at least I'm doing something productive you know earning money and working yeah. and I mean at the same time sometimes I even study at while while I'm at work so mm -hmm. but pretty much like that's been recently that's been happening like to me is that sometimes I'm even kind of just scared to come home hmm. um, because like really all they talk about is it's that school. and like yeah. or is um is at the moment or I guess right now is is NCLEX mm -hmm. is my my board exam yeah. um, and I don't know and of course it's just making me think that it's what like really what am I to you mm -hmm. um, like what would you feel if let's say I failed that mm. you know, what would you that's feel the, yeah that's the question like yeah I know I can try again but like I don't know it's just it's it's tough for me of what I'm feeling um, and they just think that uh, that's the thing too I don't know if they're thinking that I'm like slacking off like, right I think that's the thing with parents is that the, there's a disconnect like they don't know what's their kid I mean they've been a kid before they've been they've been through you know the adulting part and I think sometimes they forget that they were a kid before mm -hmm. like they went through the same things I think it's just the mindset that you have to be this you have to do be this but also I think for you at least like I feel like you shouldn't be so hard and make it a way for you to distance yourself from them I think that's going to be even more hard. I'm not saying you're going to fail. I'm not saying that at all. But just say you do. You know, it's going to be a lot on you because you're going to be like, dang, like I really wasted that time. Instead of hearing the words from, you know, your parents and actually hearing what they felt. Because maybe this whole time, maybe mm -hmm. this whole time, they weren't even that pressed, 
you know you know what I'm saying yeah maybe maybe I <laughs> maybe I, I don't know your parents like that but I think that's a, a thing that we can touch upon is that knowing whether to balance you know how to balance what you want for yourself and for your parents because I know parents are there but at the end of the day all they wish for us is to succeed and if we just didn't fulfill what they wanted that's even a harder thing because they're knowing their child you know is not even happy because they've been trying to fulfill whatever their parents want or whatever they wanted so it's a tough situation I can definitely feel on that and how they always expect something from you like for me like I have so much expectations um me being you know kind of like the breadwinner trying to be uh there's just a lot of pressure on me and I have to like go by you know whatever my mom says but luckily she is open and trusts me but again every day she's always like have you been studying and what are you doing why do you have a boyfriend you don't need a boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, <so sorry. laughs> you don't need a boyfriend and I just but I know at least why she's like that I think one thing for us as as young adults having parents behind our backs it's it's important to know why our parents are like that because they're not just doing it I mean it, it, it is hard do you do you ever find yourself ever agreeing with them like when you failed that that um would you just say because you were a bad test taker or you know what were the factors in do you think that you failed that test oh you mean the class yeah the class, the oh, class. um was it because you had so much on your in your hands at the I time? would say, yeah so and that's something say, that they said mm-hmm, that you know so yeah I would say that I you know I agree with what they said about like yes I'm doing too much and I was doing a lot but I guess to me um, the, and this is legit but I would just like tell like most people why mm-hmm. I did fail that class I just knew I thought I really thought <laughs> I was gonna pass mm-hmm. because the final exam I needed this certain grade. Uh, I just needed this certain grade to pass. Mm-hmm. Even if I get like a hundred percent in that exam, it's not like my grade is good. Like my letter grade is gonna go up. It's still gonna stay the same no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, so like to me, my goal is just to ha- um, be able to achieve that minimum, like minimum percentage of the exam, the final exam, so I can pass the class. Mm-hmm. And knowing that percentage I was like I can do this I can definitely do right. this and so like I guess I kind of slapped for the final exam like I didn't study as much because you know like I was already kind of and plus like that was the very last exam that I was gonna take for the first semester and after that exam I was like free mm-hmm. and like knowing that I passed everything else mm-hmm. um, and I guess I'm about to pass this I to answer that like I just really slacked and I got to excited that um, I was gonna like prove them like, yeah. wrong that you know like I passed mm-hmm. my first semester of nursing school mm-hmm. on top of all of these things that I'm doing yeah. I had what was one point away actually so <gasps> one uh, point oh my goodness yeah sometimes it's like it's never enough like for what we do and I really admire how much of a drive you have just to prove yourself uh, to your parents and that's what sometimes we always just want just the approval of our parents yeah, I think you. I, I definitely believe you're gonna pass. Definitely believe you're gonna pass. <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. And I think it's just a matter of just having the confidence in you, and don't really think about you know all those things uh, with your parents and everything. I, I definitely think you're gonna go far in that. And I think a lot of young people, if their parents like say, "Oh, you disappointed me," blah blah blah, like they're so easily to just give up right there. Mm-hmm. If you really, really, really care and have a passion for what you do, then even the disappointment in what your parents said to you won't even stop you, which is what you did, Mm -hmm. right? So I think that's what we all should do, you know, even though our parents can be hard on us. One, remember why they're doing it. Hopefully they're doing it out of good intention. And uh, really know for yourself at least why you're doing it. And that's always the question I, I ask every single day is like, why are you doing what you do? And I think that's the thing that really helps us in the long run, that helps us continue to do what we do. Honestly, like, guys, this is the only life we're going to live, like YOLO. <laughs> but because of that, doesn't mean that you should have the FOMO aspect or mindset, you know, FOMO, like fear of missing out, you know. So 
uh, whatever you do in life, what, as long as you're happy, I think that's that's the place to go. Mm -hmm. so, just uh, one, I think, question. One question, just to end. What do you pr prioritize more? Do you prioritize yourself or your family? Which is hard. <laughs> what do you think is more important to you? It's going to be different for everyone, but... Well, I, I, I would say both. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Cause, yeah, um, yeah, go ahead. Like I said, I want to prioritize um, being able to prove to my parents that, um, that you raised us mm -hmm. um, the best you can and that you raised us right. Um, that they did a great job in not giving up in their life of uh, continuing to take care of us and believing in us and having faith in us. So, um, of course, I want to prioritize like being able to prove to them that I'm a great son, mm -hmm. that I'm also a great uh, sibling for my siblings. Um, on top of that, of course, I want to prioritize on myself because one thing I, I guess I forgot to mention is, you know, I have a dream to, of course, have my own family. And also of what my parents did um, for me and my siblings, that's something that I want to continue, I guess, mm -hmm. to have, um, to continue on that legacy of the Flores family. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be able to you know succeed in life so I can provide be that man to provide mm -hmm. for my future family for my future wife for my future but at the same time like I said I love learning um, I love helping people and on top of that I'll also like I love to like learn and mm -hmm. curious and I'm curious mm -hmm. um, and I guess I want to also have that skill to be able to take care not just you know, people and patients, but also even my own family, mm -hmm. my own future family and my, you know, my siblings and my parents. I want to have that skill to, or to have that knowledge to like, oh, I know what your, your the sickness that you're having since, you know, I'll, these days, um, sometimes uh, like physical health mm -hmm. is something that like we all worry about and mm -hmm. like having a knowledge of what to do to I guess cure that sickness is something useful in life and it just makes me I guess it makes me feel that I have a purpose in life right that, um, that me knowing and having the skill to do this it makes me feel that that my life I guess was worth living mm. if um, I guess in the time that I would I guess eventually pass away yeah um, but same here I do both uh, just because that's also what my mom would want for me she doesn't want me to luckily she doesn't want me to believe that um, her expectation is what's gonna you know rule my life uh, which I'm very thankful for uh, of course we always have to show ourselves and show other people that you know, we are capable and that's a big pressure on all of us I think that's how everyone runs is that you got to prove something to people there's competition everywhere you know you always got to prove yourself uh, but I think the most important thing is to prove you know yourself to yourself I guess that makes mm -hmm. sense like you know uh, have these goals and and really achieve them wholeheartedly not for other people for your family of course you want to do it for your family but I think it's going to be more more rewarding knowing that you yourself did it and um yeah, I think a, a really important thing is to, if you're going through something where your family is kind of pressuring you and you have a lot on your shoulders, really communicate with them. I think that's the one thing that has helped me. Me, I kind of try, been trying to break the, the stigma or the idea that Asian parents are not very affectionate and they don't really express their feelings exactly how you want them to they're very blunt and direct uh, so I kind of like try to break that and sometimes it's hard for them like sometimes oh you Americans like you're so sympathetic like you gotta be you know realistic blah 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 but there's nothing wrong in been in trying to bring your family together and communicating with them because then at the end 
just say we we all fail our parents like that's just how it's gonna be there's gonna be like no relationship between your your parents because you never like you know did anything for you guys out there you know um continue to create more goals um continue to dream big and just like live your life the best you can you know we we all have our strengths and weaknesses we struggle we stumble but one thing that I learned is that if you were to stumble, you know, true champions, yeah, they stumble. But if you don't, you know, if you don't get back up and keep going, then that makes you a loser. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to, you know, continue to, if you want to do what, what you want in life, if you want to impress your parents, and if you want to just be the best person you can be, then just don't give up um, in life. Uh, just continue to live and just have and believe and just have that drive, have that passion to do what you want to do, I guess. Um, and for my, f- my family, if you are watching, I mean, listening to this, um, just know that, you know, I love you guys very much. Although I don't say it, you know, personally um, that much, just know I really do. Um, in the bottom of my heart, I tried my best to really um, prove or show that, show that love um, to you guys every day. Um, just know I really just want to make you guys um, be proud of me. Um, make you guys be proud that I'm a good son, I guess, or a good brother. And yeah. I guess I'll see you all later at home. Um, <laughs> but that, that's really inspirational and, and heartwarming because I think a lot of people are scared to even tell their... I mean, you're doing it on a podcast right now, but um, there's some people who won't even try to, to talk to their parents or let their parents know. I think despite the mistakes you've done and the weaknesses that you have, I think just telling each other, maybe even just once, that you care and you love your parents. Um, thank you, Mom, for everything you've done. Uh, you've really done a lot, and you're literally superwoman. Um, thank you for carrying nine kids in your stomach and uh, traveling through the woods just to find um, a way out. And, and uh, for all my dreamers out there, don't stop dreaming. And I think the most rewarding thing is Earth thing to know is that you got up after a mistake rather than you being this perfect child because that wouldn't be very exciting for for anyone just to be perfect at everything um this is kind of like related but not really for a preacher for example in a church i think the most inspirational and reliable person i would go to is a preacher who has been gone through many things and who has been through like a dark route and has done bad things in their life and has made mistakes rather than listening to a preacher who has been good all their life and was raised in a church Uh, that's an example i always go by you know even if the mistakes you've done in your life those are there for a purpose and they're only there to be a testimony and encouragement for someone else in the future so Hey Bonners, before we get straight into the episode, I have one question for you. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? I know when I was trying to get Pause, Sip, and Ponder off the ground, I had a lot of questions like, how do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all these apps people like to listen to? And how do I make money from my podcast? The answer to every one of those questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and super easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. But really, since the beginning, Anchor has helped 
help me feel more confident in putting my episodes out there. And if you had a passion to put your voice out there and you were really eager to talk to the world and share your ideas, your interests, and your passions, you need to start with Anchor. Go to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. Thank you, Christian, for joining us today. Uh, I want to thank um, Pauline for <laughs> this awesome podcast that she's doing. I really want to honor her for just doing something like this. Um, and I really like suggest to you guys there to like, listen to her podcast. Just like yes. how she, <laughs> she just talks about life and just, you know, because it might really affect you too and just like getting perspective. Uh, or different views from different people mm-hmm. you know you could maybe have a you know, different action or something like that so yeah highly suggest to, <laughs> to listen to her podcast because it's wonderful it's thank you good. thank you it means a lot and like earlier you didn't really want to say what you wanted to say but you said it and that's something i really promote on this channel sometimes we we have these hindrances and saying to ourselves that we shouldn't say it Um, And sometimes that's just hurting ourselves Uh, and you don't know what good outcome will come out of this Like who knows maybe your family will hear it and maybe there will be less tension in the house because they have a more understanding So, you know, this podcast is an outlet for all types of things So uh, thank you guys for listening and uh, don't forget to to wear your curious mind wherever you go And always be open-minded and have a an open heart and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.